Welcome back, everyone. Today we'll be concluding our coverage of the fundamentals of engineering mathematics topic of differential equations by handling the most complicated differential equation problem you're likely to see on the exam, which is a second-order non-homogeneous problem. As always, we'll use our five steps for solving our differential equations, just like we did in the homogeneous first and second-order videos. If you need a refresher on that, feel free to go check those out. So the problem we're going to be looking at is shown here, and the first thing we want to do is categorize it. All right, so we see that our highest order derivative is there, so it's a second order. All of our derivatives are taken with respect to a single variable, x, so this is an ordinary differential equation. Our derivatives are not raised to a power, they're not embedded in another function, they're not inside of a trig function, so this is a linear differential equation. Our forcing function is over here on the right. We could see that it is non-zero. That is what makes this non-homogeneous. And our coefficients in front of our y value and all of its derivatives, these are all scalars, so we have constant coefficients. And we can see that the problem also gives us some initial conditions. So now that we've categorized the problem, we can go to our handbook. This is the excerpt from our handbook. We can follow that categorization and it guides us through how to solve this problem. So first thing we wanna do is format our equation the way the handbook recommends. So the first thing to notice is that there is no variable in front of our highest order derivative. So we have to get rid of this two in our equation. We can do that by dividing everything by two. And I'm gonna replace these uh, d squared y's and dy's with just primes. So y double prime and y prime. So what we'll end up with is y double prime plus four over two which is two y prime plus two over two, which is just y equals five over two. Now you'll notice that in the formatting here, we're dealing with a homogeneous equation. It equals zero. So for now, what we're gonna do is we're only gonna solve the homogeneous half of this equation. So we'll set this equal to zero. So now that we've formatted everything correctly, we want to solve for the homogeneous equation using our approach laid out here. And then we want to choose between our three conditions, just like we did in the homogeneous second order equation video. So first let's put this into the r squared plus a r plus b format. We can see we're already there and that a is two and b is one. So now we can write out our characteristic equation pretty easily. It's going to be r squared plus 2r plus 1 equals 0. And we can solve for r1 and r2. Negative r is negative 2. 2 squared is 4. Minus 4 times 1 is also 4, all over 2. So this will go to 0, and we'll end up with negative 2 over 2. So we have a double root, negative one, negative one. Anytime you end up with a single value here, it's a double root, and that's a cue into the fact that you have a critically damped solution. To verify that, we'll do a comparison between a squared and four b, as directed here in the handbook. So a squared again is two squared, it's four. Four b, four times one, also four. These are equal, and we could see that that follows our critically damped rule here. So our homogeneous solution then, if it's critically damped, will be of the form y equals c1, some constant, plus c2, another constant, times x, times e raised to the root, which is negative 1, times x. And this, again, is just our homogeneous solution. So if asked for a homogeneous solution, this would be the answer. To find our particular solution, we need to take into account the forcing function that was non-zero from the original equation. So here we have our homogeneous solution up top, and below it we have our original equation 
with our original forcing function. You can see it's 5 over 2 now because remember we had to divide everything by the 2 that was in front of the highest order. So to solve for the particular equation, what you need to do is you need to assume that y is of the form of your equation. And you could use this chart. This is from the reference handbook. And you have this little short chart here. And it tells you that if f of x is of the form a, where a is just some constant value, then the particular solution, y sub p, is of form b. And if it's e to some power, you get that. And if it's a trig function, you would get that. So it does a kind of comparison between the original function, which is just that forcing function here, and your particular solution. So we could see that we're dealing with the first case because we just have a, a number. There's no exponential function. There's no trig functions in the forcing function. It's just a number. And its solution is going to just be a number. So we can say y is just some value. We'll call it b, because that's what they call it. And if y is some value b, and b is just a scalar number, then the derivative of a number is going to be 0. And the derivative of that is going to also be 0. So now we can take these values, and we can plug them into our original equation. y double prime plus 2y prime plus y equals 5 over 2. If y double prime is 0, we have 0. If y prime is 0, we end up with 0 there. And y, we said, was some value b. And all of that equals 5 over 2. And therefore, we get b, which is our particular solution, equals 5 over 2. Therefore, our total solution we said was the sum of our homogeneous and particular solutions. So it's our homogeneous solution plus our particular solution, 5 over 2. So this is the full solution to this equation. Now this is a pretty simple case because our value is a scalar here and we don't have any uh, terms in front of our lowest order derivative. If we had a term there, we would have to divide out. If we had a more complicated function for our forcing function, like say an exponential, we would have to use that as well. So then our last step now, now that we have our total solution, is to use our initial conditions to solve for C1 and C2. So to do that, we're going to start with our first set of conditions which say that when x equals 0, y equals 1. So let's plug in a 0 for x in this equation. So when x equals 0, there's a 0 there. And this is e to the negative 0 plus 5 halves. And e to the 0 is 1. c2 times 0 is just going to be 0. So what we're going to end up with here is c1 plus 5 over 2. And we know that when x is 0, y equals 1. So that equals 1. So therefore, c1 is 1 minus 5 over 2, which equals negative 3 over 2. So now we found our first coefficient, negative 3 over 2. Now our second value is a little bit more complicated. We have to make use of the derivative condition. So we're going to make use of y prime and x. So when x equals 0, the derivative of y is also 0. So to use this, we're now going to have to take the derivative of our y function. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute out that exponential, just to make it a little bit easier on us. So we'll have c1 e to the negative x plus c2 x e to the negative x plus 5 halves. And we can see we're going to have to use the product rule for this term here. So if we take the derivative, the derivative of e to the x is just the derivative of x e to the x. So we're going to end up with negative 
c1 e to the negative x. Then we'll have to do our product rule for this side. So the derivative of the first, which is c2, times the second, plus the derivative of the second, so negative e to the negative x times the first. And then the derivative of 5 halves is just 0. Now we'll substitute in x is 0. So this entire term will go to 0. This will go to 1. This will go to 1. And we'll end up with y prime is negative c1 plus c2. And all of that equals 0. Remember, we know what c1 is. It's negative 3 halves. So c1 times negative 1 will be 3 halves plus c2 equals 0. And therefore, c2 is negative 3 halves. So now if we were to write out our full equation, we would just substitute in here, negative 3 halves, and negative 3 halves. So just to review, we followed the same steps we followed with all of our differential equations. We first categorize the differential equation. We then go to our handbook for that categorization. We format it according to the handbook, determine the homogeneous solution, and then the part that's a little different this time, we use the table in the handbook to find the format of the particular solution. We solve for that format. And then if we have initial conditions, we use the full function and or its derivatives with the initial conditions to solve for our coefficients, c1 and c2. Enjoying these videos? Follow the links in the description below to find out how you could reach out for personal tutoring, like and subscribe to get notified when new videos drop, and comment with suggestions for future topics.